It looks like federal prosecutors are not pursuing federal charges against the friends that murdered Shanquilla Robinson back in October of 2022. Also, Monique, comedian and actress Monique, is suing CBS and Paramount over unpaid royalties from the show The Parkers. You better believe we're going to talk about it. Welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here or you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right below this video. Also, support the channel by clicking the thumbs up button. I appreciate that so much. Last but not least, join the conversation. I'd love to hear what you guys have got to say about these two stories. We're going to do what we always do best to dive right into all the piping hot tea. Unfortunately, I, this is not, the Shanquella story is not really tea. I don't want to look at it as like it's gossip. This is a serious matter when it comes to her. If you remember, I reported on this story and talked about it, blogged about it, commentated about it, whatever. I hate to say report like I'm a reporter, but you know. Um, we were, we talked about this story some months ago about the young lady who went to Cabo, Mexico with her friends. She didn't return home. Her friends returned home, told her parents they didn't know um, or that she had alcohol poisoning and that's how she passed away. When she did return home, she was, of course, deceased. And her parents noticed that she like she'd been beaten and bruised and battered. Um, later, a cell phone video circulated where one of the friends had sent a video to another mutual friend of Shanquella getting beat, beaten by these friends. So her murder was on video. This is a viral story. If you remember, this was all over the place. And these U.S. prosecutors, we've been waiting for months. We've been waiting for months for some answers. Like, what are y'all going to do? You know, think of, if you think about Natalie Holloway, who, who disappeared in Aruba years ago and was murdered. You think about Gabby Petito, who was murdered last year by her boyfriend and they they did the whole van life journey on youtube and documented their every move and she was an, a, a known case they were on it they were on it like shit or like flies on shit okay the police the feds the media they were on it but shanquella when you're a person of color when you're a brown or a black person you have to fight for your own justice apparently because We've been waiting. We, when this happened, when this story broke, we waited and we waited and we waited. And we're still waiting up until now where U.S. prosecutors tell her family that they won't be pursuing charges in her death. Like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? You remember Mexico, Mexican authorities were originally investigating it and they said they're gonna um hand it over to the united states and let the united states handle it so the united states starts to investigate now this is according to cnn federal prosecutors told the family of shanquilla robinson on wednesday that the evidence that they have isn't enough for prosecution in Robinson's death last year in Mexico, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Middle and Western Districts of North Carolina said. Let me read that again. Federal prosecutors told the family of Shanquella Robinson on Wednesday that the evidence they have isn't enough for prosecution. The evidence they have isn't enough for prosecution. Let's look at the evidence here. Let's look at the evidence here. There's a video of her friends that she went on this vacation with in the villa that all the friends signed for when they got there. All these friends stayed in this villa. They stayed in this villa in Cabo San Lucas. And they videoed their friend being beaten to death. And you're telling me there's not enough evidence for prosecution? Some were saying online, well, we can't be mad at the USA here. This happened in Mexico. This didn't happen in America. So why why are we getting mad at the USA? Why is the USA doing an investigation in the first place? If the US couldn't do anything about it, why did they investigate it in the first place? Come on now. Am I making any sense to anybody? I'm confused. I don't care that it happened in Mexico. 
if the United States is saying we're investigating, you, Natalie, Ho what about Natalie Holloway and the man who, 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 who killed her? There was justice for him. The USA was all on that. The USA is setting this precedent. The USA is setting a precedent. They're setting a standard. They're letting American citizens know. You can go to these foreign countries and you can kill someone. Come back home. This is your safe spot when you come back home. Because we won't do anything about it. We'll leave you alone. We got more important shit that we're trying to focus on. I saw this and I was enraged. I was enraged because I f followed this story from the get-go. And it was so sad. And I think the most interesting part of this entire story is that it was on video. We're not talking about we have no video here and we just think her friends did this. This is not no he said, she said. The friends told the mother she had alcohol poisoning. Why would they lie? Or why would they say she had alcohol poisoning and her body's bruised and beaten? It looks like someone has done something to her. Why would they why would they lie if they didn't do anything? Now, this is what the U.S. Attorney's Office has said in a release on Wednesday. Based on the results of the autopsy and after careful consider or careful deliberation and review of the investigative materials by both the U.S. Attorney's Office's federal prosecutors informed Ms. Robinson's family today that the available evidence does not support a federal prosecution. What evidence were you looking at? What evidence were y'all looking at? Family members are very deeply disappointed in the decision, but are not deterred and plan to continue to seek justice for Robinson. Their attorney, Sue Ann Robinson, said in a news conference. Now, their attorney said, black and brown people always have to carve their own path to justice. Is that not what we just said, right? Amen to Sue Ann Robinson. A copy of Shanquella Robinson's death certificate obtained by CNN listed the cause of death as a spinal cord injury and atlas luxation. Y'all remember when this happened, the Mexican authorities and the autopsy that Mexico did said severe spinal cord injury and atlas luxation. Atlas luxation is pretty much when you can't breathe. Kind of like the whole George Floyd situation. His death was from atlas luxation as well which is in instability or excessive movement in the uppermost vertebrae. The document stated she was found unconscious in the living room of the red rental residence on October 29th. The death certificate classified Shanquella Robinson's death as accidental or violent, noting that the approximate time between injury and death was 15 minutes. Now, the FBI claims they conducted a detailed and thorough investigation of the evidence and worked with the Robinson family to conduct an autopsy in the United States by the medical examiner's office in North Carolina. Now, this is interesting. The U.S. officials told the family that the autopsy, which was completed after Shanquilla Robinson's body had been embalmed and transported back to the U.S., US revealed no spinal cord injury, but did show swelling on her brain. Although the cause of death is still said to be determined, the attorney said. Now that's important. That's important because originally we were told that her back or her neck was broken, remember? Apparently that didn't happen. Apparently the Mexican autopsy that they got was wrong. And her her neck wasn't broken. However, she did have swelling on her brain. So there's a lot of inconsistencies with things that happened in Mexico. I feel like when it came to the people who worked at the villa, when it came to the people who came to the villa, um, the medical experts, the, the um, paramedics and the doctors and the nurses, everybody that was involved with this, like as far as outsiders in Mexico just were giving 
half-truths. I don't think it was intentional. I don't know if it was a language barrier. I don't know what it was. I don't think it was intentional and they were just working with um, these friends unless, and I don't want to get into conspiracies, but unless the friends, hey, the friends could have paid, paid these people good money and told them to hush, hush. I don't know. We don't know. I don't want to think that. But something happened in Mexico to where a lot of we were there. We were getting a lot of inconsistent stories. Even the press, the journalist who was covering it down there was getting everything wrong and coming up with rumors. And like, it's just been a lot when it comes to this story. It's been a lot. Federal officials met with the Robinson family and representatives on Wednesday to offer their condolences and present the findings of the, the federal investigation. You're going to meet with the family to offer your condolence. Offer me a goddamn warrant for somebody's arrest. Offer me charges to these motherfuckers who killed this young girl. Because we still don't know what the... If, 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 if the friends didn't do it, what the fuck happened to her? Like, if the friends didn't do it, what happened? Now, the family, Shanquella's family's attorney, criticized what she considered a delay on the part of U.S. investigating agencies, saying they waited to investigate until their own autopsy was conducted, until after their own autopsy was conducted. So, instead of the U.S. the U.S. stepping in, taking over, them getting an autopsy, them hiring the medical professionals, them taking care of everything, they waited until Shanquella's family got the autopsy on their own, because, let's remember... Shanquella's family, they, even though there was an autopsy done on her in Mexico, her family, when they, when her body got back to the U.S., they wanted to make sure. They wanted to make sure no funny business was done. Now, after they did that, that's when the U.S. Attorney's Office wanted, or the, the, the feds wanted to step in. Again, when it's a black or brown person, they don't care. They wait. The, their life doesn't matter to to the feds like that. Shanquilla's family's attorney said, if you wait till five months after someone committed a crime, they would have the opportunity and time and space to delete text messages if that's what they wanted to do, to talk to each other about the case. And she's right. These criminals, these accomplices, these so-called friends that went with Shanquilla have had five, six months to plot, plan, meet up with each other, come up with stories that they all can remember or try to remember and rehearse, figure out what their plan is going to be, delete text messages, delete any evidence that could convict them because the feds move so fucking slowly. A failure on the USA's part. Like, why are y'all failing this American citizen who went out of the country to have a good time and her life was taken from her. Now, the feds say they do not normally issue public statements about the status of an investigation, but in this case, they felt it was necessary because of the public concern or surrounding the case. No, you felt it was necessary to hurry up and get this shit done because the public was on your ass. That's what it was, because y'all was being tagged and tweeted and called and emailed and visited and people out on the fucking U.S. Capitol steps protesting and motherfuckers wanted to know what happened. Do something. Why are y'all letting these murderers walk around free? And uh, uh, they live in their life. They go into work every day and come out home and, and live in their life while Shanquilla has no life. While her family sits at home and grieves and wonders, will we get justice for our daughter? Now, the family of Shanquilla is planning to hold a march at the State Department headquarters in Washington, D.C. on May the 19th, the 200th day since Shanquilla's passing. Her attorney also said what we talked about here. The message cannot be that U.S. citizens can go overseas and commit crimes against other U.S. citizens and come back and say they're on base, that they're safe, that they're not going to be arrested, that there's going to be such a delay in the investigation that the evidence will have time to dissipate. 
this is sad. This is this is sad. This is fucked up. Right now, the only hope we have in this case is the Mexican authorities. The Mexican authorities need to do something. I don't know if we need to protest tourism in Mexico. I don't know if her team, if the Shanquella's team of attorney, her family's team of attorneys need to visit Mexico and figure out a plan to how they can try to prosecute these ind individuals. Because if Mexico, all they got to do is send an, you know, a U.S. I know it's not this easy, but theoretically, a USA. We need to extradite one of your citizens who came here in October of 2020 and murdered someone while they were in our country. Justice for Shanquella Robinson and her family. Now, on to lighter things. You know when you get to talking a lot, your mouth just be dry as fuck. And I smoked a blunt like an hour ago. So I'm a little little high and I'm also parched, okay? On to lighter news. Let's talk about Monique. I don't think we've ever talked about Monique here on the show. I did on my podcast, Damien After Dark, the audio version. If you haven't checked that out, I have a podcast. It, I don't currently have any new episodes. They're all old seasons from 2018, 2019, 2020, and 21. Seasons one through and three, if you want to check that out sometimes. Um, the podcast is called Damien After Dark on all podcasting platforms, which I will be bringing back eventually. Once we build our channel here, we build our family here, I'm going to bring back the, the audio podcast for y'all, which is going to be an entirely different show, I think. I thought about just transferring my YouTube show, making an audio file, and put it on podcast for y'all, but no, I'm just going to do a totally different show over there. But let's get on to Monique. So Monique, Monique, y'all know Monique will sue your ass in a heartbeat. She does not care. You fuck with Monique, she going to hit you in a lawsuit. She don't fight, she sues, okay? You know, we know she sued Netflix some years ago um, over you know, them offering her $200,000 to do a comedy special when she says Dave Chappelle and others like that get paid $20 million. And she thought it was unfair. I agreed with her. I thought it was unfair too because Monique is a legend in the comedy world. No, she's not on a Dave Chappelle level, I guess, but she does. She deserved more than $200,000. And it ended up working out for her because now she has a special on Netflix. So I guess they met her numbers. But now she's suing CBS and Paramount over unpaid royalties from the Parkers. We remember Monique from the Parkers. If you're really young, you've probably never seen the Parkers. When I say really young, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, you were born in the 2000s. You probably have never seen the Parkers. I grew up on the Parkers, and I really loved it as a child. I watched it all the time. And they it's a really popular show. They rerun it now on several, several, several platforms. Streaming platforms, cable network channels. And when they're running these episodes, obviously, uh, they're making money. And when they make money, you owe the people that were on these episodes payment. Now, Monique isn't the only one that has sued CBS and Paramount. Apparently, the executives and the producers of this show, The Parkers, also sued them prior to when Monique did, and they won. They won and got a settlement. So, Monique is following suit, and according to the Associated Press, it says the breach of contract lawsuit filed in Los Angeles Superior Court and obtained by the Associated Press alleges the defendants artificially depressed the show's profitability to retain millions that would otherwise be contractually due to Monique's production company. So did they shrink the number? From what I take from that, and I could be wrong, is that they altered the numbers and made it look like the show was making less than it was. And they were pocketing that money. 
and giving Monique the chump change. I could be wrong. Now, while this, they said, why, uh, I think this is her attorneys that said this. While the series has proven to be a major financial success for its producers and distributors, the series' talent have not been permitted to share in the fruits of that success, the lawsuit says. Now, the lawsuit was filed by Hicks Media, the production company that Monique owns with her husband and business partner, Sydney Hicks. It names as defendants CBS Studios, Paramount Pictures, and the show's production company, Big Ticket Productions, and it seeks monetary damages to be determined at trial. Now, the suit says the series creators and writers have been similarly, similarly unpaid and that Monique learned of the alleged breach of contract when they recently filed a similar lawsuit. So, Monique, when these creators and writers of the show filed their lawsuit, earlier I said producers and executives, but it was creators and writers. When they ended up filing their lawsuit, that's when Monique realized, oh shit, I, I, they fucked me over too. And that's when she filed her lawsuits. Monique said in a statement, I just want the contractual compensation that I've earned. I want to read her Instagram post. This is what she put on Instagram a few days ago. She said, today we filed a lawsuit to make sure that we are fairly paid money that we are owed for the Parkers. Actors rely on the good faith of Hollywood companies to honor their profit participation agreements. Sorry, but the words good faith and Hollywood in the same Hollywood companies in the same sentence just don't like that and go together. Y'all know Hollywood ain't got no faith. 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 The Parkers was she continued to say the Parkers was a huge success and continues to be a source of revenue through syndication and streaming channels. To further make my point. The executive producers of the Parkers took legal action for the same concerns that I have, and they've already settled. Unfortunately, all too often, talent gets kept in the dark. We're looking forward to shedding some light on the subject. I love us for real. Get your money, Monique. I commented and I said, get your money, Mo. I don't blame her. Get your motherfucking money. All that money that these networks are making off of these TV shows the talent like we think celebrities get paid a lot for their work and they do but that ain't even a percentage of what that's not even like a little smidge of what these big companies and networks and whatever ceos it's not a fraction of what they're getting the people behind the scenes are really banking okay like really banking and i don't blame her i would go get my money too like, don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Instead of don't play with it, don't play with it, don't play with it. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I want my money, and I want it by Monday. Bitch better have my money. Mar uh, Monique says, huh, Alexa, play bitch better have my money. Okay? Um... The show has been available for streaming on Netflix since 2020. In a previous lawsuit, we talked about Monique sued Netflix for race and, uh, and sex discrimination in its offer for a proposed comedy special, saying they were lowballing her. That was settled last year. And one of her attorneys said something that I thought was powerful. Monique is not shy about taking on these David versus Goliath battles in Hollywood to challenge these questionable practices that are endemic to the industry. I know that's right. Monique ain't afraid. She said, y'all can try and cancel me. Y'all can blackball me. But you can't blackball what God's got for me. And that's the thing. These networks think that they can blackball people when they do something they don't like. But... I always stood by Monique. I never thought she was being difficult. I thought she was just saying, pay me what I'm owed. That she was standing up for herself. And she, she, now that she's doing that, she's standing up for herself and it's helping the young black girls behind her who won't have to wonder why they're not getting paid this much money or why 
someone is stealing money from them behind their back. And she said that. She said, I want people, the, I want the young girls, the young artists coming up before me to not have to deal with this kind of shit. She does not care to be blackballed. She probably don't have to worry about working too much. I'm sure she's, she's, um... Set, but anyway, what do you guys think about these two stories? How do you feel? Give me your comments regarding Shanquella Robinson's family and Shanquella not receiving justice from the USA. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? Let me know in the comments because I'm not surprised. And what do you think about Monique suing CBS and Paramount? Do you think she's justified in suing them to get her royalty checks, or do you think she's being difficult again? I want to hear what you guys have to say. Join the conversation by commenting below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video. Also, subscribe to the channel so you can get all my content. We do after shows each and every Sunday with the Zeus Network. So if you're a fan of the Zeus Network, make sure you check out our after shows each and every Sunday night right here on Damien After Dark. I love you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.